We have one more and then your headliner. This next guy, give it up for Steve Ballet. Sometimes I do get a good feeling. That's accurate. We are, uh, we're getting pretty deep into this, uh, into this set list, guys. Can I safely assume that you have been drinking? Yeah, um, yeah. It's good, because I didn't want to be alone in that, so that's good. You guys, I'm, dr I'm drinking, you're drinking, let's get real. Some real stuff happened to me Wednesday, very specifically. On Wednesday, you guys, I became an adult, and I was a little bit uncomfortable. And I don't want you to confuse becoming an adult with becoming a man. Those are two completely separate things. When you become a man, there's a lot of fanfare. People shout Mazel Tov. <laughs> right, it's a glorious event. When you become an adult, it's a very depressing realization that your world is dimming. <laughs> and that happened to me on Wednesday when I went to the bank. And I won't, for anonymity purposes, say which bank it was. But if I were to describe it, it would be somewhere between the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Mexico. <laughs> So now we're clear on copyright infringement. Good. So I went into this anonymous bank because I felt the, the, the need to be responsible and decide if I should start a 401k or an IRA. That was my rock bottom moment when I decided, you know what? It's just time to be an adult. Cut to two and a half minutes later when the man takes a look at my accounts and promptly informs me that I need mean not really seriously consider either of these options. <laughs> this is a salesman. A salesman chose not to sell me something I was attempting to buy. That's where I'm at. So not only have I just had that, like, I'm going to be responsible moment, but I've just now had my first failure to provide for my imaginary future wife. And that's a nice adult feeling moment. And Becoming an adult and the death of your childhood are two completely separate moments. Alright, so I was in this little cocoon, so I guess it's good that I'm out. But there, there's a decisive moment when your childhood dies, and you might know it. Usually it involves your parents and finding out that that suspiciously rhythmic screaming from their room was not shouting. And that's just how they like to get down. And you know what? Good on them. You know? They weren't fighting. Healthy marriage. Yay. <laughs> Mine, mine was not so lenient. Mine was, it was one of two events. They happened in very quick succession. The first one was that when I was 17, I was a senior in high school, and I think I became the only man to ever come out to his parents without actually being gay. <laughs> and the way I did this was they asked me, when you're a senior in high school, they ask you, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? So they said, Steve, you know, what do you want, what do you want to do with your life? I said, well, Mom, Dad, I, I really like performing. I want to be a performer. I want to be an actor. And they were like, sweetie, we don't care who you love. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no. I mean, not that that's a problem, but that's just not. They're like, we don't care. We love you anyway. Somehow we always knew. <laughs> so my childhood died because apparently for the first 17 years of my life, my parents thought I was gay. <laughs> Not that that's a problem, it's just a tough realization for me. But, but there, was, there was that, there was also the moment that me and my dad had this song, it was a classic rock song that we used to just jam out to in the car from ever since I was a little boy, when I was like eight years old, so I belted out this song. When I was 17, this is like three months after this no mom I'm not gay moment, was when I discovered that that song is explicitly about masturbating. Explicitly. You might know it. it's called Hold On Loosely by 38 Special. And it's explicitly about that. And I couldn't help but know, like, I couldn't help but think over these last 11 years, like, did my dad know? Did he know the whole time? And he's just watching me and, like, the side of the car is like, that's my son. <laughs> Gonna grow up to be alone. Good job, buddy. So it was one of those two, I'm not sure, either way, it's dead, went in the cocoon, came out, and I came out into this wonderful world where we have a tremendous national debt and unemployment rates, and these things affect me now. Like, it matters that these things are there. When I was in the safe, safe nestling of college, it didn't matter, but it does now, and that's aggravating that I have to deal with real-world issues. 
But somehow, we must, as a society, our saving grace is that amidst all of these troubles financially, we mustered up enough cash to greenlight Human Centipede 3. <laughs> Thank Jesus for Human Centipede 3. If you did not see Human Centipede 1, first of all, you've been making some stupendous life choices. You need to continue down that path. Just to keep you informed, Human Centipede, as the title may suggest, uh, a guy decides, you know what, it's cloudy out, I think what I'll do is sew three people together, ask him out. <laughs> the M. Night Shyamalan twist, they're less than appreciative. <laughs> and then once that bubble bursts, it's essentially 90 minutes of just going, yeah, that would suck. That would suck. Human Centipede 2 is just simply the same thing but we're 12 people instead of three. It kicks it up a notch. Good on him. So these, these movies are now going on, and I can't help but be very scared about where the, the creative direction of this country is going. And that's why I think Prop 30 was a good thing. Woo! Sorry, that's my one little political thing. But I think what we should do is, they don't have a plot for Human Centipede 3. They don't have an exec producer, so I'm going to get on this. All right? And what I'm going to do is so 30. Bank of America employees, together, ask him out, and just watch him squirm for 90 minutes. And I'm going to sell it to Hollywood, I'm going to make a million dollars, and you're ready for the end night Shyamalan twist? I'm going to use that million dollars to start, you guessed it, a 401k. <laughs> you guys, I'm Steve Bally, that's my time, thank you very much. Okay.